On the show tonight, a Hollywood star who's won two Oscars. I'm such a fan of this man. Actually, I love the Oscars as well. You know what I, I, I like the thing was, when someone goes waffling on for far too long in their speech, and then they have to eventually have to just turn up the music and drown out what they're saying, and then you can't change my... Great show for you tonight. Hollywood, music, comedy, all covered. Double Oscar winning Hollywood star Sean Penn is here. <laughs> Sean Penn will be sat there. <laughs> Top British actress, it's your actual Miss Babs from Acorn Antiques. It's Celia Emery, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she will be joining us. Hilarious <laughs> goddess Ross Noble is on the sofa tonight. We like him, we do. Plus, we've got music and chat from chart-topping singer Kelly Clarkson, everybody. I love Kelly Clarkson. I love Kelly Clarkson, I do. Hey, really excited to meet Sean Penn. I mean, Sean Penn. Star of uh, Dead Man Walking, 21 Grams, uh, Sweet and Low Down, and of course, won Oscars for uh, Mr. Griver, and also one of my very favourite films, uh, Milk. Absolutely stunning. And of course, it's the Oscars this weekend. Everyone excited? Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, four and a half hours of glitz and glamour, from the action-packed opening of the show right through to the award for makeup and hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, this year, so riveted, ladies and gentlemen, because you kind of think, will Julianne Moore win Best Actress? <gasps> Who knows? Will Eddie Redmayne win Best Actor? Who knows? Will Estonian film Tangerines win Best Foreign Language Film? <gasps> Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but I love all the award show, I do. I love them all, all the award shows, whether it's the A-list stars of the Oscars or the after-show party at the Soap Awards. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> Let's get to the guest on! <laughs> Later, we brought you the chat from Kelly Clarkson! But first, he It is Mr. Sean Penn! to see you all. Welcome back, Ross. Is Hello. it the first time for you? You've never been on before, Celia. Never been on before. Can't wait. Lovely to see you. And Sean Penn, never been here before. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen this show, Sean? I have. I have. And I've, still I've, you're I've, here. I've, been, I've visited when a friend was on. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw you backstage, yeah. but I just assumed you hadn't watched it or something, and that's why you were you, here. You, you can't avoid it when you try <laughs> it, can you? It's, yeah, it's on. Yeah. It's on places. <laughs> but now, are you familiar with your fellow guests? Of course he is. Look, he just got a clue who I am. But God bless you, I don't mind. <laughs> I was briefed. Oh, OK. <laughs> there will be a lady in green. Her name is Celia. She's an actress. <laughs> so, second best exotic marigold hotel is the film that Celia's in now. But did you see her in Calendar Girls? I didn't see Calendar Girls. Oh, OK. Girls. You missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we've got a picture of Calendar Girls. Hello. <laughs> Yeah. That is, that's the Helen Mirren line about... Considerably bigger bands, yes. Yes. <laughs> and now people say that to you. Well, I was in Skegness once, having a moment of, uh, 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 you know, calm, out on the end of a pier, and um, I suddenly heard this uh, young girl shout out to her mother, Oh, look, it's bigger bonds! <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> Except that two weeks later, I was in Paris, walking along the Champs-Élysées. Hello. Hello, and a very handsome man, not as handsome as you, or you. Um, <laughs> that was very nearly an awkward moment, but... Uh, <laughs> what? It still is an awkward moment? <laughs> Stop! Hello! <laughs> I'm not dead over here! <laughs> it was too difficult to get to the <laughs> You're supposed to be an actor. 
actress, pretend! I'm sorry. <laughs> I do, I adore you. <laughs> but anyway, I'll have to go back now. Oh, yes, you're on Sans Lise. I was at Sans Lise walking along, and, uh, and along comes this rather um, good looking man uh, with a bit of a twinkle in his eye, and he stops and looks me right in the chest and says, Ha uh ha, -huh, la grande gâteau. <laughs> Which was a much better idea. Yes, you like that. <laughs> and you see, Ross Noble, he's a, he's a stand up comic, but people. I mean, they shout really bizarre things at you, Ross. That's sort of my own fault, though, because of the sort of show that I do. You know, it kind of invites that sort yes. of thing. The big one at the moment is on the um, on my last DVD. I recorded it in Australia, and I, I was wearing a brown shirt, and I started to sweat. It was really quite unpleasant. I was sweating from just under the the boobage there, just yes. a little bit. Yes. There, there you go. You've got a picture of it. Oh yeah. How yes. absolutely delightful for people <laughs> to watch in, in HD who are trying to <laughs> enjoy a nice relax. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, you see how it's like there's several places where. Yes. It's, and, uh, and I filmed it in an arena, and I turned around, and that was like a giant screen and and I, and I and it just struck me that it looked like I had sort of you know how pigs have got like lots of breasts <laughs> it looked like I had sort of pig titties <laughs> I was lactating so I just started talking about my sweet sweet pig titties <laughs> and I might have done that for about 10 minutes and uh, <laughs> repeatedly saying the words sweet sweet pig titties and then now because the DVD comes out and I'll just be out and about with my children just minding my own business <laughs> and then somebody will just stop and go sweet sweet pig titties <laughs> <laughs> I have to explain to my children why we we pink is being shouted. So yes, because Sean, because that is the thing about being a you know a very recognisable person. Do you get people shouting things at you in the street? Not about my breasts. <laughs> That's good. I haven't had that. Yeah, uh, the language is not maybe appropriate for the show. But that I hear a lot when they shout. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the, it tends to be that. Uh, people are either civil with me, which means they say nothing, or they have something not not kind to say. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No. Yeah, it makes you, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're feeding it. Now you're people watching this going, no, he really likes it. it. Be it, rude to him. It <laughs> couldn't be any more than there is. <laughs> um, and th here's the thing. I know in the films you you are acting. I'm aware of that. And yet in life, I'm s I, this is pathetic, really, but I'm still quite intimidated. But you, <laughs> is it just me? <laughs> no, it's you two too. Yeah. Okay, good. okay, that's good. Yeah. You're smiling. I like. I, it's nice to see you smiling. It's. I wasn't particularly sure you could, but it, it's. It's, <laughs> it's nice to see. It's nice to see. But now here's the thing. So both your kids, they're grown up now, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when your daughter was starting to date, were mm. you a relaxed father? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine ding dong and the door opened at Sean Penn? <laughs> <laughs> Were you nice to the suitors? Well, when my my daughter waited till about I guess it was she was 16 when the first one came to the door, so that was 16 years of waiting <laughs> <laughs> for that moment. I'd been fairly permissive with her. She she had a lot to trust, um, you know, going out with friends and so on. But this was not her night. This was my night. <laughs> <laughs> and so he came to the door. She was ready. Then I had to explain to her before I would answer the door that she was not ready. <laughs> and then she needed to go upstairs. And she tried to, you know, fluff that off. And I said, no, her name's Dylan. I said, Dylan, I will not let you go out with him if I don't get this moment. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, to which she said, oh, my God, Dad, and went upstairs with a red face. And so then I went to the door, and uh, I opened it quickly. Oh, Mr. Penn. And I said, no, 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 call me Sean. Uh, uh, that's your car? Yeah, nice. Uh, you're, you're not going to drive drunk with my daughter, are you? <laughs> no, sir. No, call me Sean. Oh, yeah, uh, yes, sir, Sean. <laughs> And uh, he says, uh, no, I won't drive with... Good, good. Listen, I prefer you get her back early. But I want you guys to have a good time and, and all. And, uh, but the main thing, whatever time you do get her home, whatever you do with her while you're out, I'm going to do with you when you get her home. <laughs> Were they home quite early? 
<laughs> well, if the thing was, he, he, he laughed in what I thought was a nervous laughter <laughs> with me, but it was laughing at me. He was three-time mixed martial arts champion of his age category in California, so <laughs> he, he thought the whole threat was pretty humorous. <laughs> Sean Penn, Sean Penn, you are here to tell us about your new movie, The Gunman, which opens on the 20th of March. And this, I was just saying to you in the corridor, I mean, it's a proper kind of edge of your seat thriller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell them some more about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, reeled them in, reeled them in. Uh, this is the, the director who made the movie Taken, and it's, um, so it's, you know, d d geriatric gunman movie. <laughs> Um, um, <laughs> it's a genre now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, no, it's, an, it's a movie ab about, you know, former military that went into the private world of that, private contracting world, and um, mixes some of uh, the impact on politics that these organizations have without oversight uh, with a classic thriller idea. And, uh, and it's got an ex exceptional cast. Yeah, lots of British interest. But also an exceptional cast. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi for pen. Taxi for pen. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, one of my f favorite, you know, there's, well, it, 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 I could say favorite, really, about um, each of the people, like, really extraordinary people. Mark Rylance, who I've been wanting to see in movies more, but also mm. to work with for a long time. Um, Javier Bardem and and Ray Winstone, who anybody's blessed to have on a movie, and uh, Idris Elba. And of course, you did film bits of it in London. Yeah. And it's sort of, did they did they shut down those streets? Because it's you walking around, and you can't quite believe that people aren't going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they did shut down streets. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but for windows of time, you know, there'd be a lot of get it now or or get out kind of. Yeah, because you, I mean, there's one say you're walking across Tower Bridge and... They shut down the Tower Bridge, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was already stuck in that traffic. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, let's have a look at a uh, clip. Now, this, this is a kind of a pivotal moment in the film when you realise that they're, they're right. out to get you. Right. And it's very rare I have to issue a little warning before the clip, but uh, if you don't like violence, you mightn't like this clip. <laughs> <laughs> It's all, that, it's all that RADA training. <laughs> now, I have to say, uh, you appear to be in the shape of your life in this film. Like, you're ripped in this movie. Is that lots of gymming, or is that really just surfing? Um, mostly, there was a lot of fighting, and it's all um, in the Krav Maga style, so it's a lot of... Uh, I did a lot of that and stopped smoking for a while. Oh. Yeah. They, normally, smoking normally, and doing those scenes doesn't, don't go well. People too. normally get fat when they stop smoking. Yeah, but not if you're in the gym early in the morning. And, oh, and okay. it's a bit worrying to know that you can lose weight by hitting a man with a shovel. Because <laughs> now you've said that on telly, I can see, like, this new craze for shovel size where there'll be people in gyms, <laughs> like the spinning class, but just people standing there with shovels, smashing... <laughs> with them, uh, just maybe some sponge shipping containers. Well, he lost some weight also. The guy, the victims lose weight Yeah, I bet well. they do. In That's fact, the, where the scene goes from here, somebody loses a lot of weight. <laughs> now, I don't know if you've touched Celia Imrie, but it's like she's made of rock. What? Oh, so fit. <laughs> so fit. Actually, I've got one arm that's quite good. Try that, Sean. That's, for, yeah. <laughs> that's great. It's isn't one it? arm. The other arm's not so can I, good. Can I have a go at that one? Yeah, yeah go on. Can I... Con yeah. Right. But and that then... one's better, why, I think. Why is there a... Because I, I carry my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, ice no. is heavy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Why yeah. is that... Sorry, I'll stop know. touching it's you. This is wrong. No, this is wrong on so many... Mind, you don't mind? I think, oh, no, fantastic. I quite like it. But <laughs> just, I, it's just because I carry really. more on oh, my so right you. arm. You've oh. been down the shovel of size, haven't you? <laughs> you do, you do... Is it taekwondo? Taekwondo, yeah, I'm an orange belt. But even when you practice that, you're in fights. Well, yes, but it was a long time ago. But you're so polite, I can't imagine you in a fight. Oh, Graham, you don't know the other side of me. Really? You really don't. And is it Celia Unleashed? Yes, and if you, get, if you get very, very good, if you get to, like, Dan level, you have to register your hand and your feet with the police station because they're lethal weapons. <laughs> I promise you. I promise you. But I'm not... Did they I'm... just tell you that? <laughs> but I'm 
I'm not at that stage. It was a long time ago. And uh, Ross, wow. are you going to? Because how you... dare you? <laughs> you're in the best shape of your life, and you do taekwondo. Ross, what are you going to do? <laughs> Hold. I'm going to do feeler size. I'm going to build up these muscles just by squeezing. I'm no, so you... sorry. I'm enjoying no, it too much. Yeah. When are we going to see an action movie with you two? Shall can we? we? Can you? Can we sign off on that cage now? Fight right here. Oh. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. See, Emery is a cage fighter. I That's I'd, love I'd, it. I'd pay top Weird. dollar to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's do it. Um, but now he, he, Ross Nobles, and he is now wading into the world of theatre. You're going to be the producers. I am. Yes. So presumably you are going to, you know, have to. Sing and I've dance. Been, I've and... been dancing all day today. Oh. I've been hopping and clopping because I've got to do the the good and hard hop clop, which is a slappy dance. Yeah. Did you play the writer with the pigeons? Yeah, yeah. I play the insane naughty playwright. That uh, yeah. I'm I'm sort of exploring. He's a psychopath basically who loves Broadway, <laughs> but also <laughs> is trying to clear the Führer's name by writing what that turns out to be the worst play in history. So yeah. <laughs> So I'm singing and dancing and doing all that. And you so, join it on the 18th of May. I do, yeah, yeah, all around Britain, yeah. It's a bit weird though. I was I was there today, and it is one of those weird things where walking into the you know into the rehearsal room, and it's straight out of Kids from Fame, and they've all got the leg warmers on, and I sort of amble in and go, right then, should we get dancing then? <laughs> <laughs> Quite, yeah. yeah. Are you good at it? I'm I'm enjoying it. That um, you are. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no, it's, 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 you know, I've got, a, I've got a while, but I'm, you know, I'm, at the minute I'm sort of hopping when I should be clopping, but that'll all be sorted. Yes. It'll be fine. Yes. It'll be fine, yeah. And now, in terms of uh, creating characters and transformations, Sean, your biography is littered with so many kind of stories. You kind of think, is that true? But somebody thought, when you were young and you were a cater waiter, was there someone who thought you were a drag artist? <laughs> no, there was, there was a... I worked along with a lot of other people in my acting school. We, we, one of the jobs you could get with, was with catering by Pierre. And Pierre, who I suppose was from France, <laughs> heard my name Champagne. <laughs> That's a good miss here. And the next thing I knew, each of my uh, catering deployments were to very colourful parties with little umbrellas in the drinks and <laughs> a particular clientele, yeah. Champagne is here! Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> if his name's Champagne, you know the rest of the story. <laughs> uh, talking of unexpected uh, roles, this is still a view in the movie This Must Be The Place, when you're playing kind of the, the rocker. Oh. Mm. Now, does anyone else know who I'm going to say he looks it's like that? It's not me. It is not me. No, <laughs> it's not you. Anyone else? Anyone want to guess who I think that looks like? <gasps> Not Helena Bottom Carter. <laughs> so that's quite good. <laughs> no, it struck me. Uh, Leslie Joseph in Birds of a Feather. <laughs> it's, a... <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Put the lipstick on. Yeah. Body double. That's what you think. Now, uh, Celia Imri, you got a very. <laughs> I, I mean, is it a rude look alike? Was it. Well, it wasn't what I was expecting. I was doing a play uh, called Plague Over England, where I played Vera, who ran a, a nightclub. And uh, she was sort of stuck in the 20s. So I, I wore a bandana and a Charleston dress and the buckle shoes. And um, there was a rather young, handsome man in the wings, a bit like you, Graham, actually. Good recovery, good recovery. I like it, Celia. She's working, she's and, earning her money uh, tonight. Yeah. And uh, he kept staring at me, like you. And, uh, and uh, he said, you remind me of somebody dressed like that. Who is it? Who is it? He said, you look just like... I can't... Think. I know it is. Jack Lemon in Some Like It Hot. <laughs> <laughs> you see? You see? The thing is, I can see. I can't see. That's not her at all. <laughs> <laughs> now, we find you in more familiar territory in uh, the second best exotic Marigold Hotel. It opens next Thursday, the 26th, and this is you back as Madge Hardcastle. Uh -huh. Now, is she. I think she's more of a man eater in this one than the last one. So do I. Mm -hmm. she's, got, she's got a suitors all over the place, but she can't decide. And in fact, uh, let's show the clip then. Okay. This, is, this okay. is you sort of caught between. Two lovers. Two lovers. There's a song in this, I'm sure. Everyone's back this time round, and yet I read 
in an interview at the weekend, you were saying that the first time you and some of the other cast watched it, you found it quite shocking. <gasps> we did. We went to see a, a screening, and uh, it was it, we didn't have any kind of fancy lighting or anything. It was very, very bright, bright heat of the sun. And uh, first of all, I think I'm 26 still, but I'm not. And uh, so you suddenly look at your... We all looked at ourselves um, in this no fancy lighting and came off in absolute shock. And John Madden, our brilliant director, came and caught us all, you know, stunned. Um, and he put his arm around us and said, what's wrong with you? And we said, but we all look so old, John. And he just <laughs> roared with laughter. But, of course, that's the whole point of the story anyway, because we're supposed to be at that age of our lives. Well, but also, I think it's a really nice message and it's about seize the moment and yeah. you know time yeah. might you know clock ticking exactly yeah. you've got exactly. the arms of a 26 year old though do you think and you certainly <laughs> have oh my goodness i should show them off a bit more perhaps. i can't really concentrate i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i've got sean penn there and the arms here <laughs> but celia not just a talented actress an all-round you know fitness guru also a lady novelist yes uh, your new book, now it's said in Nice, so is it pronounced not quite Nice? Exactly. So if you're talking about it, it's not quite Nice. It is, because yes. it's nearly Nice, but it's not quite. Yes, and there are bound to be some parallels drawn between this and Marigold Hotel, because mm. it is older people setting Having up shop. new adventures, yeah. Yes. Leaving behind one life and starting a new one, exactly. Have you been to Nice? You mm. must have done, of course. Have you been to Nice? No. I've had one of them. <laughs> I've had one of the biscuits. Have you? <laughs> Yeah. They're very yeah. good. They're very good. Um, so I, it's a very good excuse for me to go there because I have to write, you know, when I can sort of smell the place. Oh, that's a good idea. So it's a good idea, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So that's hence that's the second book. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's set there too. Yeah. And I only came back about two days ago, especially for you. Oh, bless you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, she was really in the gym. <laughs> um, uh, and Celia, now your son is an actor now. He's a proper 20. adult. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's at uh, Warwick University studying drama, and is a... I hope he doesn't mind me saying, but yeah, I think he's a very fine actor, actually. Um, but he's going to carry on and finish his last year. Something to fall back on. Well, he's... <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's sort of a hopeless, though, if you think like that, I think. You've got... I, I, I believe you've got to want to do it or die. Never mind about something to fall back on, otherwise it won't work. Do you know I'm what I mean? No, I'm loving this. I should write some of this down. The wisdom of Celia Imrie's <laughs> idea. Yeah, but also, her hands and feet or registered weapon. He's <laughs> <laughs> travelling around drama schools, coming in, yes. going, act or die. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask them, we'll definitely act. <laughs> now, uh, Sean, your mother, who's uh, an actress and, and she's been in a lot of your movies, but when you started, she was not encouraging. No. To the point of she was discouraging. Well, she came to the first thing I did on, in theatre and, and she thought it was awful. <laughs> and started to talk about that, which I should fall back on. And there wasn't much to talk about there. <laughs> so, came back on board. so it must be so amazing for her now that like, you, you really turned that around. <laughs> With some performances, she feels that way, but she maintains her opinion. Oh, she's still your mother. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, now, talking of acting, you obviously had to cut your teeth. And I love this fact that there is an episode where Sean Penn appears in Little House in the Prairie. That's right. <gasps> <laughs> Who did you play in Little House in the Prairie? I was an extra. I like this a story that you still were very dedicated to your craft, even as an extra. Well, what happened, it was my first time on a movie set, and at a certain point they broke for lunch, and, uh, you know, you're in, it, it, it's Little House in the Prairie, so you're in very heavy wool, woolen suits, it's 106 degrees in Simi Valley. And I didn't think it appropriate to break out of the story we were telling or the time period we were telling to go to a catered lunch. So I stayed out in the sun. And by oh. the time they came back and said action, I found that I could do an Irish jig <laughs> and, and then fall straight down. <laughs> And neither of those were what was scripted. It's just my feet started doing that, and I had sunstroke. <laughs> so I've been going to catered lunches ever since. <laughs> it's a valuable lesson learned early. I, uh, I think I've seen that episode of Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> I think it's the one where the girl skips down through the meadow, and then a boy jumps up and, like, hits her with a shovel. <laughs> 
Yes, thank you. I've lost the thread. <laughs> and, uh, Ross, your kids are little still. Six yeah, and yeah, six, six, six and uh, two. two. But oh. you do a thing. This is... I, I like people who do this, who use their children to amuse themselves. That's what kids are for. <laughs> kids are there, like people go, oh, they're special. Yes, but they're also... They're little... They're little people to have, you know... Just, they're there for fun as well, you know? <laughs> the little one now, my big thing is, I'll just draw a moustache on her, <laughs> and just, so she's got a little French curly moustache, and then I'll just, I'll, I'll let it, and then she goes off and she forgets about it, I forget about it, and then, you know, she'll run off and I'll be chasing her, she'll emerge around the corner, I'll go, <laughs> little Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you do uh, when you bring them to, like, a, somebody's house party. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this works best in, in, in sort of four or five. Um, you basically take them to a housewarming, uh, you know, somebody's new house. And what you do is, when the people are showing you around... Or, you know, if people get, like, a new conservatory and stuff and they're just showing it all off and that, you get them to stand staring into an empty room and it's best with little girls as well because they've got the best voice for it. And then just get them to point into the empty room and go... Why is that boy crying? <laughs> <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Now, uh, Ross Noble, Ross Noble, you uh, just finishing your tour here. Yep. Uh, but then, anyone watching on Channel 10 in Australia, look out. He's on his way. Uh, when do you start in Australia? In uh, two weeks' time, yeah. Unless you're watching this as a repeat in the future, in which case, I've gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah, I'm all over Australia. Meanwhile, so, in UK, yeah. you're back on telly. You've got the second series of Ross Noble Freewheeling. It's on Dave. So, the premise is people tweet you. Yes. It's a show, with, it, it's, it's a show without a format and sometimes no direction. People tweet me anything. Literally, we start filming, we've got no idea, no pre-planning. People just, I say, what's happening? And then people tweet me and then I go, oh, that seems like fun. And then I get on my motorbike and I ride to wherever they are and then we turn up with a 15-strong film crew and we just make up a TV show based on their suggestions. So... What was the thing with the crab thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get faster on the phone. <laughs> so somebody says, I want to see men lowering their mongs um, <laughs> over live nipping crabs. <laughs> Now, you don't see that on telly. You don't? You don't, well, you do now. <laughs> because what I did was, I tweeted out and went, who wants to lower their balls over a live nipping crab? <laughs> the trouble is, is that because it's a TV show and you're lowering, you know, balls and crabs, you know, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a dangerous concoction. We had, to, we had to ring up the insurance people and do a risk assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the balls, for the crab. <laughs> <laughs> There's this big, long list of things. The crab must be in the shade. Oh, he's in the shade, all right. <laughs> he must be. So we get this live crab and this, this young lad, lovely lad, he says, yeah, I've got the balls for it. Literally, I've got the balls for it. <laughs> so we take him to an aquatic centre and, and obviously, cos if, if it was like a, a cookery show, if you show somebody cooking a crab, then that's nobody bats an eyelid. But if it's somebody lowering the balls, that's a different thing. <laughs> so I cleverly, right, cleverly, got him to wear a chef's hat <laughs> and an apron, and I got three of the crew to act as judges, and then they, he lowers himself within pincing distance, <laughs> and boom, another one completed. Cr balls and crabs sorted. Well, That's we, the future of television. We've got a picture of him doing it. There it is. Look. There he is. <laughs> That woman at the back looks like she's having the worst no, day no. at work <laughs> ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> she shut her eyes. Yeah, yeah, no. She can't look. But this is the thing. Because we just, basically, you know, I ride around on my bike, we have these adventures, and they are basically, you know, the crew, we're just a bunch of people essentially just going on these mini adventures. And that's Lucy, uh, who works on the show, and she really didn't want to do that at all. So, <laughs> but she's a professional. <laughs> and she was quite happy to observe the swinging balls of just... What is it? Ross Noble Freewheeling. It starts on the 24th of March at 10pm on Dave. And uh, we've got a clip from episode one. Check this out. <laughs> years since you won American Idol and now with a trail of Grammys and over 20 million albums sold she's back with some of her best music of her career singing her new single Heartbeat Song it is the fabulous Kelly Clarkson yes, thank you very much come and join me on it Ross Noble that's Kelly Clarkson Hello. 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 there we go
everyone's calendar girls. I loved it. Yeah, everyone's bonding. Doing? Mind the champagne. Nice to see you. Oh, champagne, champagne. Oh, uh, right. That's good. Uh, I don't want to flash anyone. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I didn't sit in this before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we didn't, we didn't practice sitting. Like I know I'm about to share and stone the audience. It's fun. <laughs> well, hello. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I, I had a little chat with you on Saturday. We did a pre-record on the radio. It was one of my favorite interviews ever. Oh, we did have a laugh. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. And you were off to do the Valentine's Night. Yeah, how did that go? Oh, my go? gosh. Have you been? Have I've, you... I've, oh, I've been. Has he okay. been? <laughs> Has he no, been? I just think because it's late and I'm old. <laughs> Me too, and I don't go out that way. And, um, no, it was so much fun. They knew, like... Every word is so packed, you're sweating your butt off, but, <laughs> but it's so much fun. Oh, yeah. good, good, good. Yeah. Now, uh, that is from the new album, Piece by Piece. That single's out now. A uh, heartbeat song, yeah. Yeah. The sing actually, the single isn't out now. It's released on the 22nd, yes. on Sunday. And then the whole album is out on the 2nd of March. 2nd, yeah. Wow. And it sounds, and the word is that it's going to be great. It's really, well, it should be great. We've been working on it while I was preggers and then afterward. It's been a while, so yeah, yeah. it should be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because that's the thing. Produce an album, but also produce a whole human being. Yeah. <laughs> Creative life. I know, but fans are like, where have you been? And I'm like, creating a baby. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> it's time. A little yeah. girl called River Rose. Yes, she's pretty much better than everyone's child. <laughs> <laughs> Does, does she have a mustache? I don't know. She's... Does she have a mustache? No, no. Actually, we have pictures of her with a mustache. It's got to be done, it? Yeah. Get on board. Uh, my husband and I are back there, and I totally want to try your thing where you oh, scare the I? crap out of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After the show, I'll write a little down. I know. I need no. <laughs> yeah, but, but actually, Kenny, I don't know if you know, we got it because uh, River Rose, your daughter, yeah. she's traveling with you. She is. Uh, so close. River Rose came to watch Mommy rehearse this afternoon. She loves and, it. And we've got a little... There's River Rose. <laughs> Look at her head. But, but hang on, hang on. Are, are her cheeks always that puffy, or is the ear defenders no, pushing they're... them? <laughs> Look at her mother. No, she has. Yeah, she has my cheeks. Oh, uh, and was that must be that was just before she vomited? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Can I just she... say someone's sitting in that seat? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> uh, right before we go, let's make this week's visit to the red chair. So, uh, who's there? Who's there? Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Michelle. Michelle, lovely. And uh, where are you from, Michelle? I'm from Peru. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> a first, ladies and gentlemen. We have not had a Peruvian. But where? Oh. She's from Peru. Peru. Oh, so she's pearly. <laughs> I just love how you said really, like she's lying. <laughs> really? I know somebody must be from Peru. <laughs> and she's not, yeah. not going to be sitting on a llama. It's... <laughs> Just, just arrived. Right. Just arrived. Right. With, with, with those terrible pan vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my dear. We've been distracted now. Uh, uh, do you, but you live here now? Yes, I live in London. All oh, right. What do you do? I'm a chef. Oh, right. Like a posh restaurant or, or Peruvian uh, well, restaurant? Now, now I'm a private chef. A Fancy. private chef? Yeah. In somebody's house? Yes. So is someone watching this now going, where's my dinner? <laughs> on toast, right? Is she? <laughs> uh, off you go with your story. Um, my parents came over to visit um, me and my fiancé. Mm -hmm. And my dad's very environmentally friendly. So on their first night, he decided to turn off all the appliances. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Peru. What was amazing, what was amazing about this, and I think I might have got an insight into what you're like as a director there. She went, so, and Sean just turned around and went, <laughs> and just, in, in his eyes, he just went, she's not going to survive. <laughs> it, was a, it was a beautiful moment. Uh, let's try another one, let's try another one. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 I think... You're what, clearly enjoying it, John. What, what, <laughs> Graham, what is the record for the most number of people that have been going down in Well, we will run out. <laughs> this lot can all get in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Six, 600 who, people. Who wants to be dumped by Sean Fair? <laughs> OK, let's go another one now. Hi, what's your name? I'm Maggie. Maggie? Mm -hmm. Good luck, Maggie. Uh, <laughs> where do you live, Maggie? Um, I'm South African, but I live in Ascot. In... Ascot. 
She lives in an escort. <laughs> oh, she's driving her own. Don't do it. She lives in a car. <laughs> No, is it Ascot? Ascot, Ascot. Ascot. yes. Yeah. Where the races Oops, are. Yes, yes. Yeah, OK, brilliant. Uh, so, off you go with your story. Um, a few years ago, um, my husband and I took the family to France in Normandy um, for a holiday. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and we were in the... Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were on the water slides, <laughs> and we kept going up and down the slides with the kids, going, having fun. And then my husband decided to go. <laughs> to go and keep buy, going, keep going. Buy some ice cream for us. And then um, I was wearing a nice gold uh, swimsuit, and I thought I looked really hot. <laughs> On the next one, can you do me a favour? On the next one, when you can you do like a kick like you did to that bloke's? <laughs> can you dump them like you're kicking them out of the yeah. chair? We'll give you a shovel to hit the stage. <laughs> okay. Hello, sir. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Jake. Jake. Lovely Jake. And uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm a student of uh, drama and applied theatre and education. Ooh, now. Act or die. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was doing the Imri technique. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go with your story. Uh, well, my story starts in Zimbabwe, where I uh, volunteered for three months in my gap year last year. Yeah. Um, and it's what? My gap, gap year. year. Yeah. Gap What's year. What's that? It's a thing that uh, rich kids take. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the way you pronounce it, it's like you would say gap We year. have that get a job year. <laughs> yeah, save up to go to college year. Yeah, no. Live on a mattress and don't go to college. <laughs> the, the way he said it, you know, it's like gap year, but he said gap year. Gap, yeah, he's <laughs> you know, he was being funny. He was being yeah. funny. Yeah. He was being funny. Uh, anyway, you were in Zimbabwe. You volunteered yep. to do uh, something. Yes. I was Help, presumably. Children or yeah. something. Yeah, very good. teaching in a school. Uh, very good. Uh, mildly relevant. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I had an argument with my housemates and I decided to call off I should go for a run. So I decided, you know what? I should probably go for a run. And <laughs> unfortunately, when you're surrounded oh, I'm by... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we didn't need you for that one. That was... <laughs> that was some very poor storytelling right there. Can, <laughs> can we put him back in and watch Sean kick it? <laughs> we'll have one more. We'll have one more and see if Sean I'm will so kick it. I'm so glad you don't um, have these for us. Hello? <laughs> Hi. Hi. You, you join us on quite a tough evening. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We're done. We're done. Uh, well, how about everyone? If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go in that chair, you can. Bombs over to our website at this very desk. That is it for tonight. Please, huge thanks to my guest, Kenny Clarkson. <laughs> with musical guest Noel Gallagher, hot Australian actress Margot Robbie, Hollywood icon Will Smith, Wolverine superstar Hugh Jackman, and sporting legend David Beckham.